these IOs are, are they programmable? Yes. Okay. IOs means you can say, is it an input or is it an output? Okay. The real outputs can only be outputs. So they are definitely outputs. Because it's a relay out. A relay is something that closes, it's a dry contact. So they can only be outputs. Relays can only be outputs. The eyes can be an input. Or you can make IO2 also an output if you want to. But that you can change in programming. So you change it whether it's output or input on the program? In the program, you say, I, I want it to be input or output. Not the useful name. It's a flick of a switch. Oh. On the program, so you flick it to oh, input, but flick it to output. The cell phone is on. Very similar to that. But we'll go through it a little bit later on today. All right, so you guys understand the difference between your ultra, the buttons, the green and the blue, and why the ultra has, yes, they all have, both of them has got four IOs, but the ultra has got two additional relays. The speed hasn't got the relays, but it's got the connections for the entry panel. So yes, let's say you don't have to have the entry panel connected to the G-speed. No? Let's say you can buy a second hand G-Speed Ultra, but you don't want the intercom side of it, or it's faulty, the GSM is faulty, or the wire is broken between the gate entry panel and your unit. The G-Speed Ultra will still function 100% with the four IOs. Okay, so it's not that if the speak or this, the speak or the entry panel is faulty or the cable connection is broken, that your Ultra won't work. Yes, your communication, your, your intercom facility won't work because obviously this is not faulty, but your IOs will still work perfectly. So you can open and close something it will still work. Yes, it's but you can't speak. Yeah, because this one is dead. Maybe the wire's broken. So, so but you, you but you can still trigger the gate from your phone, for example, if you want to. But someone won't be able to be able to call you from the outside and say, "Hello, I'm here at your gate. Please open." They would now have to phone you <coughs> from their phone to your cell phone. Uh, so the intercom section won't work. Can you replace the wiring? Okay. Yes. Yeah. So if the wiring's faulty, just replace the wiring. If the unit is faulty because of lighting, whatever, then you can replace this unit. So you can, but like I'm just saying, if this is down or not working, the G, G speed off will still work perfectly except for the communication by okay. the, the buttons. All right. Just a pause here. I'm talking too much, which I should know. All right. So the look, if you buy uh, G Ultra or G Speak Ultra. This is the box, and this is how the box will look. You can see obviously there's your energy panel, and it's blue. And there's a G Ultra, that's a smaller box. But you'll see on a, on a box, somewhere there's a symbol, an icon telling you it's got an MTN chip sim inside. I'll explain to you now what it means. And it is a 4G unit. So it could be a 2G unit, it could be a 3G unit, but all like. If you buy one today, well, up until the from about a year or so ago, even more than a year ago, they will all be 4G units. Because you guys have probably heard about 2G being disconnected or switched off um, 2024, May 2024. They are switching off 2G units or 2G network, not just you know our network, it's all 2G devices. And in 2025, they're switching off 3G each. Okay, so at the moment, 4G units will, will be quite will still work for a long, long time, I think. We know we've got 5G um, network, but we haven't got 5G units yet. We'll probably work on it. But just be aware that 2G units will fall away. And if you've got a 2G Ultra, you might have, you'll might you definitely have issues next year. 2G maybe. Ultra? If it's, the 2G? Ultras, if it's 2G. Oh. Is it going to fall away? Because the, network, they, the network's empty and Vodacom, they're not supporting 2G anymore. Or they're going to stop supporting it. It's really stopped working like in the farm areas, 2G's already is not working too well because they're not supporting the 2G's so much more. And then next year they're switching it off. All right, so there's your symbol showing you that's what it is. It's an MTN chip SIM and it's got a 4G, some, uh, 4G, it's a 4G unit. All right, so let me give you some history about the G Ultras. In 2017, we started with G Ultras and they were all 2G units and they came out with a recode pay to go Vodacom SIM card. So they had a SIM card in and it was recode already and it was Vodacom. Then by 2019 we got our three units out and the first ones came with Vodacom prepaid SIM cards and then the end of 20, 2020 give and take we actually made a deal with MTN 
that we will supply an MTN card now with a few benefits. And the benefit, I'll give you the benefit now to it. Um, let's speak to the next slide. And then obviously from 2022, we actually had 4G units. Now with also for 4G, I prefer MTN, but now it's a TIP SIM. So I'll explain that to you now. So the SIM cards, the new units come with a 4G chip SIM. So chip SIM means the, chip, the SIM card is embedded, soldered into the PCB. So you can't remove it. Okay, it's, chip, it's a chip. So it's a chip inside of the SIM card that, that gets manufactured here by us. And we made a deal with MTN. So our, that chip SIM we got from MTN and we embedded into our PCB. Because we had a lot of times, I'll tell you now, I will even ask now, there are a lot of times that actually will take out a SIM card and they'll put it in their phones. You know, like if it's in the in the guardhouse or something. So you'll see these units on the top. There's a slot for a SIM card. Okay. Um, Marco, you want to ask something? Well, you know the, the G2, the other one, the, the intercom yeah. buttons. Yeah, the MK2. Yeah. Two, yeah. yeah. That one's got the, the SIM card that you, normal SIM card that you put in. Yeah. And then they steal those SIM cards. Exactly. So the 2G units and 3G units, even the 4G unit, also have a slot for the SIM card because maybe when you install this unit, MTN is just not working. Very bad signal. Right. Or the client says, you know what, I'm, I'm a big company, I've got my own APN, I've got my own SIM card, I want to put my own SIM card in, you know, because I'm paying Vodacom millions of rands and I've got 20 SIM cards, so I've got my own data VPN um, network. So, yes, you can still put your own SIM card in, in that unit. So, if it's a 4G unit, and you want to use the SIM card, just pass it around so they can see. <coughs> they see everybody see. So if it's a 4G unit, you power it down, which was switched on, you insert your SIM card that you want, it's a, it's a micro SIM, you, you put it in and then power up the unit. Then it will then override. always it will override the chip SIM, it will then use whatever SIM card network that you have now pushed into it. So program the wise you don't have to do anything, it just loses the SIM card. It doesn't lose the, it doesn't lose the programming, so let's say what's existing 4G unit, and now you see MTS are good, and the client says, no, let's go for Vodacom because it's got a better signal there. Yeah. You just leave power unit with this Vodacom SIM card or Cell C, you put it in, and you power it up. So you will lose no fragment. All everything will still work exactly the same, except obviously the number will change, the number of that unit, because this is basically the G Ultra is basically a cell phone, because it's a SIM card. Yeah, yeah. So only obviously the number will change from the empty into the Vodacom number. But your, your numbers that it's dialed out to or go game notification will still be exactly the same. So no programming change. It will change the number for you automatically. Just a number that you have to phone if you want to do a miss call to the unit. You have to now save again because it's a different number. So you can put your own SIM card in if you want to. Alright, so there's a chip SIM. And you will only change to, I would say for me, the only reason why I would change from the chip SIM MTN to a non MTN is because maybe where you are, there's no MTN signal. That's the only reason I would say, okay, I have to change to a different network because there's no signal, MTN signal where I am. Because there are a lot of benefits having the chip SIM. One of those benefits are free data for life on this unit. So that's 4G chip SIM, MTN SIM, SIM chip, we give you data for life for free. So you don't have to load data on this unit, which is, which is a great feature because it's not so much as money saving. Yes, you will save maybe 12 rand a month because that's on the previous models that has a lot of chips on. You have to, every month, you have to go and go to your cell phone banking and you have to go buy data. And normally, this 12 rand data will give you 30 megabytes and you'll throw half of it away because this unit doesn't use lots of data to operate. But the least I could buy from my MTN or from my FMB app was 30 rand, which is uh, 30 megs, 12 rand, 30 megs, which was too, but which was way too much. So now with the MTN, we give you free data, and it's woohoo data. Okay, because it's quite good. So it's not so much saving money; it's just you don't have to now. You can you put this unit in, you forget about it, because the data for life is free. If it's a speak, yes, you still have to load now airtime or call tokens. For the speak, you're able to dial your number. You have to load airtime on that one. Speak. The speak is call tokens, which is basically airtime. Right. Because you've got to load now the capability so this unit can phone you. For, because if I want to phone you, I've got to have airtime. Right. So on the speak, you still have to, you don't worry about the data though. On both of them, don't worry about the data. 
But on this peak site, you have to load call tokens. So this user, when you press the button on the call station, it can phone you and say, listen here, someone's at the gate, answer it, and then you answer the yes. Just to shake whoever. And then you can, so on the peak, you have to buy call tokens. Is that on the app? Through the app, yes. Okay, so you can't go through your cell phone banking and buy airtime for this unit if it's a speak. You've got to go through the app to our wallet. We'll, we'll, there's a few sites regarding that. So you have to <coughs> buy call tokens, and call tokens you can only purchase via the app, um, which is our wallet. Then you can, so the wallet means you transfer money from your bank account to basically our bank account, 100 Rand or 200 Rand. Then you've got wallet, you've got 200 Rand in wallet. Then you can say, I want 100 Rand to be call tokens. 100 Rand to be SMSs, if you want to use SMS, which I doubt you want to use SMSs, but you can if you want to. Okay, but we'll get to that later on. Yes. Oh, I thought you. All right. Do you guys understand for the G Ultras, the, the, the 4G chipsims, you'll have data for life. If it's a G Ultra, it's awesome because you install it and you don't have to tell a client load airtime or load data. Don't have to worry about it. On the speak, yes, you have to load call tokens. So if, if you load 300 Rand, it maybe takes a month or two or three or four to work through that 300 Rand. I'll give you now what the cost is involving that. Then you have to load call tokens again. So there is some little bit of admin work when you do AG speak. Is, is, there, is there any integration or planned integration into platforms like uh, WhatsApp? Not yet. Yeah. So we give you notifications so it looks like a WhatsApp. So when you get a notification from this unit from the data side of it, it looks like a WhatsApp. But it comes through your MySense remote app. But it looks like a WhatsApp, you know, it's, 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 a, it's you see a message coming, it's not SMS, it is a data, it's a push notification coming in, which is basically like a WhatsApp, but it's not on the WhatsApp physical no, item. It's on that, on that app we're going to download as a later on. Yes, Marco? When you program this and you buy your phone, yes. do you need that date data or you still need air time? So from your phone, yeah. you're going to need data, because it's a, it's a data. Well, it's data, but for the, that one you need Wi-Fi. No, GSM, it's GSM, because it's got its SIM card. So, you so you can also for that one, for the, 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 the new one. Oh, they're talking about the motor? Yeah. Yeah, no, this, no, this is a Bluetooth connection. No, from your phone to the, to the motor is Bluetooth. So this one is, you need uh, GSM, new data. data. Yeah, so we, if I want to program this unit, I need to be either in the Wi-Fi area, so I can have data through, or network through the Wi-Fi building, or if I'm in, in a client's house, I need to have my network on, I need to have data for me to be able to use the GWEB app to send all the programming via GSM to the, to the unit. Okay, everybody with me? Okay, right, so if you have a 3G unit or a 2G unit, you can even buy the SIM card from us. So it's not a chipsum. So let's say you've got an old unit. The 2Gs didn't have a chipsum. The 2Gs didn't have a chipsum. But if you want to get the benefit of having that free data for life on your 2G or 3 units, we sell the SIM card separately. They're about 80 bucks excluding that. You buy the SIM card and you insert it into the, your 2G or 3 unit, and then you've got data for life for free on that unit. So it doesn't have to be the chipsum that's only data free or data for life free. You can buy the SIM card separately from us and you can have it then working on a 2G unit. But it's going to be a waste because it's falling away. 2G, yes. 3G, I would say. 2G is still two years' time. So for that 80 bucks, the convenience for another two years, yes. So this unit is this is, this unit is actually 2G unit. And here, <coughs> there's a SIM card in here. Oh, this is a 4G. Where's my... Oh, there, this one is a 3G. So there's a SIM card. I could put the SIM card here. It will still work. There is a SIM card in there. It's a chip SIM. Uh, not a chip SIM, a normal MTN SIM, but it's the data one for free. So just be aware, if the client's got a 3G unit, and he hears or you hear about this now, you can put a SIM card in there, it will work, the data will, will work for free. So the data, like I said, is not, so it's saving you 30 bucks, 12 bucks a month, but it's the inconvenience of loading, and you forget, use the owner and forget. Then after about three weeks or two weeks, yes, it's been a while since I've actually got notifications from my offer, then you realize, it stopped working two, two weeks ago because the data ran out of it. So that 12 rand you're saving a month, yeah, it's 12 rand, but it's more the convenience or the inconvenience of, you know, not having signals or not, not need to buy data for the unit. 
Okay, because you put it in and you forget about it, it's a deal. So it will just keep loading itself. So yeah, with MT we've got a we've got a data data packet, so it will always be data, it will always be on data. So no, does it know when it's short when it's low? When the it's data low. will never go low on the call time. On the call tokens, yes. Um, we can now give you low balance warning, which we couldn't do on a prepaid. We couldn't tell you, listen, yeah, you've got hundred rand of airtime, and you can say on twenty rand, give me a notification telling me that my airtime for my GSP is going low. So you've got time to reload new airtime, so you don't run up airtime. So on the prepaid one, we couldn't give you that that facility or that function telling you pre warning you there if your balance is running low on the calls. With our SIM card, we can now you can now specify. I want a low balance token warning on my. Do not install it near the DOS sensor of the D5, Evo, the D10, or the D2s. Because it is a JSON device. Remember in the old days when you put your phone close to a radio, it, might, it makes a tick, tick, tick noise. So that's similar to what's happening on the D5, Evos, or D10s, the non smarts. Because it, it could interfere with the DOS sensor of the D5 smart. So normally we say keep it on the PCB. Don't put it right next to where the DOS sensor is of the D5, for example. So try to keep it as far as away as far as you can from the DOS sensor. How would you know what the DOS sensor is? Sorry? How would you know what the DOS sensor is? So on the smarts, there's no DOS sensor. So if it's a smart motor, you can put it where you want to. There's room for it, there's mate, so you can put it in here. The ultras can fit in here on the smart on the smart motors. Alright, and we've opened this section over here so you can still see the buttons or press the buttons and still see the LCD. Okay, on the smarts, but on the Evos, there's no controller tray with these pockets. So then, normally you can only put it on the left or right from from your power supply or from the motor. But the DOS sensor on the smart is right near that barrel. So we would say try to put it on the further side or on top of the PCB on the side of the PCB. Then you can go with it. Don't put it right. So a lot of times it does interfere, but we say just for safety, um, you know, put it away. Like. If you fly today, they still tell you to switch off your, your phone. Yes. Similar to the DOS, you know, the DOS sensor is sensitive to EMF because it can interfere, you know, like, um, you know, yeah, so it should, should not be, you know, something that's, that's finicky about EMF should not also be installed in, in a motor, you know, but let's say you want to put this ultra next to a DV box in a house, you switch on and switch off the geezer, but there is a, a Bluetooth device or something that, that will be affected by any so it could interfere with it. Okay, should you need to install it then. Then, hopefully by today, you'll be a qualified person, or we'll see after the test if you're a qualified person. So yeah, if you want to install it, you know, that's why you're here, so you can have the knowledge to be able to install it. And then don't modify the components to, to do something different or to maybe make that relay stronger or change the relay so it can handle better current through the relay, you know? Don't play around with units, you know, if it's there, leave it like it is. Connect a bigger relay, they use a small relay to, to shunt or to control a bigger relay to switch on flood lights. Okay, because the relay there can only handle, can only handle three amps. Flood lights, like a thousand watt flood lights, will overpower that relay. But you can use this relay to put in a small relay. <coughs> that small relay can then power up a bigger relay to handle the current that's running through those lights. Okay. So it will let you on your on your outputs. Ultra. Oh, oh, on, the, on, the on the outputs. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll get to which the the IOs are very. They've got a lot less power than the relays can do. Can but we'll get to that a little later on. Can you tell me what what are the what 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 are the current ratings? Uh, or 3 amp relay and a 10 amp relay if it's for lights. Well, or just the uh, last question on, yes. on, the, on the relay. Uh, the 3 amp that you are talking about is, is on the coil of the relay. Is it no. no, the 3 amp is the circuit of the relay. The it's, coil can be 12 volt, so it's 12 volt or 24 volt. Yeah. It's on, on the contract of the relay. Exactly, you must be able to do 3 amp or 10 amp. And on the, on, on, on the coil? Could be, coil must be 12 volt or 24 volt, depends on what you are connecting to it. So over here, we are using 12 volt. But on this smart, the smart being a 24 volt system, we are 24 volt. So when you, if you want to switch on heavy lights, and the ultra is in here, and the lights are here by the spot lights, then you need to have a 24 volt coil relay, not a 12 volt one. Because this one only gives 
24 volt to the to the ultra, and the ultra will give 24 volt to that coil, and then the coil is 24 volt, but that the contacts can be 10 amps, because then you know the, the contacts are fine because it's put in from the from that relay that you installed additionally. Yes, Mark. Will it be switching through the IO to the next to the other relay? It's just a light one, or how does it work? So if you've got a G-Ultra, you use straight relay 1 and relay 2 to a relay that, that can handle 10 amps or 30 amps. Yeah, but how do you connect the, that relay to the... Yeah, there's, there's the connections for the relay. The IO. There's, well, there's a relay connection, not the IO. Oh, the relay connection. So there's a common, no, normally open, normally common, normally close. closed. That's relay 1. There's another normally open, common, and normally closed for relay 2. So that's a separate, you connect to a separate relay. Yeah, so yeah, so this relay that's built in will connect to a stronger relay because okay, this one can only have 3 amps. So this this will then connect to a bigger relay basically. That the, the coil can be 12 or 24 volt, depends on what is your power source of this. And then that context of that bigger relay can handle 10 or 20 or 30 amps. Because this one can only handle 3 amps. So normal 220 volt light, normal uh, you know, lights at your house, this is fine. You can have the light coming through here. All right. All the lights, or just the well, not not all the lights, lights, like your your courtesy lights, your garden lights, or uh, your, your your gate lights. So two or three lights, two twenty volt. You can you can run it through this through this contact through this relay because it can handle three amps. You've got to work out your voltage versus the the wattage, and you'll get your amperage on 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 what you'll get. But your geyser won't work for you. No, you're going to bring the relay. Exactly. So that's why I said the geyser. So you connect you connect this output of this relay. To a bigger relay that can handle the 10 or the 20 or the 30 amps. Because that's just applying power to the bigger relay to trigger the relay. Exactly. Uh, that's all it is. This. So, like I said, I'm not an artist. And we've got positive, negative. This is the connections of the G Ultra. So, this is your ground. This is IO1, IO2, IO3, and IO4. Okay? They are 120 amps each, input or output. These are 3 amps output because it's a relay. So here you've got your normally open, you've got your common and normally closed. Okay, and the same for relay 2. So what you will do is you will bridge out your common of your relay to negative. Okay? You're normally open or normally closed, but normally if you want to switch on lights, for this example, you will do normally open. So you normally open will go to the coil of your second bigger relay. Okay? So the coils are normally not polarity constant. Some of them are some relays need to, they will show you negative or positive. Most coils doesn't matter which way you put the negative positive, but just check when you connect your second relay. So this will then go, this this coil will then go to positive. So what's going to happen? When your ultra tells, or when you, or when there's a scheduled trigger, when this relay closes, there will be a little bridge going there. Because what's going to happen, what's happening at the moment? There's a negative waiting here that's common. There's a negative waiting there. It's waiting for the close, so normally open to close. So it's waiting to jump to this section over here. So the moment the ultra gets commanded to say switch on the lights or the geyser, there, there will be a little door coming here now. There will be a connection now. And that means this negative can now fl fl flow through to the coil of this relay. And being a positive, there's always a constant positive. There. So there's a positive waiting here. It's waiting, 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 waiting for this relay to get a negative. And the moment it gets a negative, this relay of this, this coil will then energize this relay. So let's say you've got your common normally open and normally closed on this relay. Okay? So it can switch to live. Yes. So what you'll do is this will go then to live of your DB box. Common to live. Yes. Okay? DB box. Then you normally open will go to live of your lights. And your neutral of your lights will go to DB neutral. DB neutral. Like I said, I'm not an artist. Neutral. 
So this picture is this picture. So it's the, the light neutral goes to DB box neutral. Okay? The line of this light is here. And there's a line from this switch to the DB box light. So there's a light constant waiting. It's waiting for you to say, the moment you switch, that switch then close, basically this bridge, basically similar, and then switch, then the light can go now back or to the light. So this is what's happening here. The ultra is commanding this bigger rig, because this one can handle 10 amps. Okay. Because this one can do 3 amps. This one is not strong enough to, if this is now, let's say, 1,000 watt lights, and you've got 5 of them. It's going to pull way more than 3 amps, so you can't connect this straight to this relay, because it's too, it's too much. Yes, Wesley. Can you connect that straight to the DB wire? How do you give it power? Does it need to be 12 or 24 amps? What? The, G no, the, the ultra. ultra. Yeah. yeah, so from here, obviously, if it, let's say you've got a power stop, or you're picking up to your gate motor, so from here... But not if not the gate motor, if you just want to hook yeah. it up to your house right? Yeah, so then you will need a, a 12 volt power supply, DC exactly. power. So from here, obviously, there will be another cable. So it either has to be 12 volt or 24 volt. Yes. So normally if you go to like Regals and stuff, they will have a 12 volt DC power pack. Okay, it will be like a box with a center battery in it and that will give power and obviously that plugs into your 320 volt of your house. So then this will give 12 volt DC to this ultra, the ultra will then work. So that means this will be a 12 volt coil because it's getting 12 volt through this system. If I would hook this up now instead of to a 12 volt DC pack, if I would hook this up to this smart motor, which is 24 volt then this coil has to be, be able to pull in 24, 24, 24 volts. So what's, it depends on... What's, what's the max that the ultra can handle? 20, 30 volts, 24 volts, 30 volts. So it's 12 or 24 volts. Okay, so it depends on what is your power source, because obviously that will run, that same power voltage will then go through to this coil, and so you must make sure I've got a 12 volt power pack, so I must have a 12 volt coil relay. If I've got a 24 volt power pack, or something that's 24 volt, then I had to buy a 24 volt coil circuit. Okay, so you guys understand my sketches? It's very rough, but you understand it, Matthew? Yes. Okay, Maya, you're right. Yeah. Okay. What, 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 what my last question on this now would yes. be: How then do you remotely control the? No, ask. Awesome. How do you control the lights? How, how do you control it really? That now you control. So that is what you control with the radio, right? With the way of thing that you said. Yeah. That's where. That's where. You, that's what you control with the radio. With your radio. Yeah, with with your GSM rather. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yes. Or, yeah. or like this one, this ultra I have made a loop. Or I can have a trigger schedule. So I can. The ultra has got time windows. So at my house, I've got an ultra that switches on my pool pump using the same sketch. So every day, 4 o'clock till 6 o'clock, my ultra has got a time window. So I don't have to physically say switch on because I'm not yes, very yes, busy. Yes, you know? yes, so my ultra can program that it will switch on whatever time of the day, night time for the geezer to the morning, whatever. The ultra has got timing that you can say, listen here, 10 o'clock in the morning till so 2 o'clock in the afternoon, switch on. You know, energizes this relay and it will switch on your, it will switch on whatever it's connected to. So you can either do it manually, like switch on, switch off, or you can put timing on it. You can say from 6 o'clock till 6 o'clock in the morning, it must switch on your car lights or your geezer or whatever you want to do. Okay. So it can either be manual, manual triggering, me, me, or it could be via trigger schedule. Meaning, meaning that. Uh inside inside that module yes there's a coil for an internal relay there yeah and uh, and uh, that is what that battery 24 12 volt or 24 is also feeding 
Yes, because I've reached out a comma now. Yeah. So I could have used a positive. If I want to, I could have made this common to positive. And then over here, I would yeah. just have to take this negative then to that. So yeah. uh, it's better, it's safer to do, I think it's safer to do negative switching, but it, it's up to you. Yes. What, 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 what I'm trying to, to, to say is that uh, the, the, the supply to the point that I'm seeing on the slide number three mm. at the bottom here is internal to the GSM model. Correct? Yeah, because the, it's getting the, involved. The, yeah. This part here is internal to the GSM model, right? No, no. No. Yeah, yeah, sorry, yeah, this is the internal one, yeah, okay, yes, okay. but <laughs> that coil, it's purely, the coil, so don't worry what's building here on this relay. It's built inside yes. there, and, and, yes, and, but and it can and handle 12 or 24. And your GSM activity, whether it's programmed or it's manual, yes. that is what it is controlling, Yes, correct? so depends on what voltage it's getting, Yeah. it will then give it out here, because here I'm giving it a 12 volt negative, and because obviously I've created this 12 volt positive to there, so because I'm using my power source is 12 volts, so this will give out 12 volts. So the coil of, this, of the relay, yeah. and the other side of the relay will go to positive, so then it will pull in the, the coil. And then that normally open and common will go to your energizer to switch it on. Oh, okay. And you'll have three relays there, instead of two. On the GL auto, you still need two relays to, to get gate state of oh, electric fence status from the energizer. So, but on the G-speed, you will need to have three relays. Want to switch on and off the the the, 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 the energizer, and then a relay one and the second relay will be for status. To tell you it's on, I don't tell you that the alarm or the fence is in in the arm. In three three relays for three. yes. If you want a G speed on a electric fence, if you want a, if you got a G ultra, you need only need two relays on a G ultra. So you could have two electric fences. Okay, but we'll get to this. A sketch actually showing you how to do it. All right. Do not install it near to gas. Obviously, it's, there's some there's some circuitry going on here, so don't put it near gas. And then packaging could be dangerous for children and animals. The dispose of it in the waste bin. And, and with the, this gas here, you have to put the thing or gas. Or yeah, the LP gas. Yeah, LP gas. And then uh, should be connected to your common. Just a loop. Just a loop. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's maybe not necessary if you're using one power pack. If you're using two different power packs, then you need to common the two power sources so they can communicate and say that between the positive and negative. You need to bring up the, the ground. So, so you need to do that all the time? Yeah, you should. Common to negative. Has to if it's a good, you know, it's a good exercise to say mm -hmm. every time I'm using, I bring up my, my ground to my negative. Let's see what if you switch positive, you'll have common to positive. Yeah, so that's when you, so there you must be careful now. Yeah. Because, like here you can see my common goes to my negative. So if I'm using positive switching, I'm going to blow it. That's exactly what I did. I swapped my positive negatives around here, and then I blew a track on my ultra, and I said, well, is it brand new? So I opened it up and I sold it myself, because I burned the track. But that is actually illegal. It's not, it's not, you know, it's not, it's not advisable. So the common is, is just for negative. negative just power. for negative. So yeah. if you do negative switching, this sketch is perfect. If you do positive switching, which I would say you should not do, but if you do, then then you can't take this, this you go to positive, make sure nothing else connected to ground or negative, because otherwise you're gonna blow it. If you've got an electric strike lock, yes. you'll have to switch it to positive. Uh, our, our strike locks works either or negative or positive. But most of them are positive. The ones I know is that you can decide. You can decide if you want to give it a negative or give it a positive. So, but then it will go from common to positive. Okay. Yes. Yeah. If you want a positive switch, lock, yeah. if you want a positive switch, your common goes to positive, but that normally open goes to your positive of your striker, yeah. and negative of your strike lock goes to negative. Yeah. Okay. But then just make sure that this common doesn't go near. Make sure it only goes to positive, it doesn't go to negative. Because otherwise you're going to blow something up. Yeah. Just, just a question. If you do, if you do positive switching, yes. that, that wire there, uh, put your finger on the board and I'll direct you. Okay. Go, go, go to the next one. Yeah. Up, a little bit up. That, no, a little bit down. Yeah. Down. Yeah. Down. That one should go to positive. Yes. And the, the, the one that, that your finger is on now should go to negative. Correct. That, that is when you're doing positive switching. 
Yes. But then how are you going to blow it if you've got that common to minus? So that's the thing. So if this common goes to positive, yes. right, make sure that you don't, because I had it, it was negative, and I switched these two, my power supply switched it around. Yeah. And then I blew it. Okay, so, but, but otherwise, if it is in the manner that you were talking about, yes. now, it, it shouldn't. It shouldn't, yeah. Okay. It's just make sure that, because I swapped my power supplies around, and all it wasn't live DB box. Okay, and this will go to live lights. So the other side, the relay will be exactly the same if it's a double pole relay, or a double throw relay. So now what you can do is, if you want to make sure that, yes, the lights are on, at the moment, you can't monitor, you're not monitoring the light because the, the ultra is switching on the lights, yes, but you can't see it because you might not be there. So what you do now is you take this common, you take this common to ground, and this normally open to IO1 as an input. So when this relay energizes, yes, this side, it brings, brings a live to the normally open and then switch on the, 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 the light. Yes. On this side, it gives now a negative because remember this ground is brings up to negative. So there is a negative waiting here the whole time. The moment this relay switches, this normally open becomes closed and then it gives an input into IO1 and you've made IO1 to be an input. Now I can tell you, yes, the lights are on because the relay is closed on both sides. So it's switching on the lights and it's closing the circuit and I'm giving an input. So now I can monitor my lights or your swimming pool pump. But you, 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 you are actually monitoring the reading, not, yes. not, not, not yes. the, the lights. Yes. So what, what, what is likely to happen from the drawing that we have? I see there is that you could be on load shedding. Exactly. Ah. But, but, but it will tell you that the lights on. The lights are on. But it's not ready. But, but it's not ready. Right? Yes. Okay. So, <coughs> how would I how would I counter that? Because I can see you are you are understanding, or I can see you are looking forward. So how would I counter that? So all I have to do is this has to be a twenty four uh, two twenty volt relay. So if I want to waste some time, I will then do not this. I would want to do this. Let's see what this. I'll show you. So I will do this. So this I can keep because I'm going to use that. <coughs> so this common of this relay, I will take it to live of my DB box. Because this relay can handle 220 volt, but one amp is three amps. Okay? So my live will go to common. This normally open will go to a relay that can handle 220 volts. So that relay is not a 12 volt or 12, a 24 volt coil, it's a 220 volt coil. And then this side of this relay goes to neutral DB box. So what's going to happen? When the ultra, which is working from a 12 volt power supply, because remember it's got to have 12 volt power supply, okay. So the ultra's got to have a 12 volt pack, okay. When the timing or when you shunt it to say close this relay, because there's a live waiting there, the live is waiting, 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 waiting until it says right, it's time. Then this bridge will close. It will then give a live to this coil. And because the other side of the coil is connected to neutral, this relay will pull in. So now this common and normally open and normally close. And on this side of the relay, common, normally open, normally close. Well, that's it. well then, so this live, this common will also go to live DB box. So on one double relay, you've got to take both to commons to live. You can you can reach this so one to that one. You can reach that. That's why I say this not the sketch to look like spaghetti. You just bridge it across the relay. Yeah, so you have to bridge it to not to the neutral, to the live, not to this one. And this normally open will then go to your light. Live of the light. And the neutral of the light will go to DB box. DB box. 
But on the other side of the relay, they normally other than <coughs> yes. that to something else. So now this common, you take it to ground, oh. and this normally open, you take it to. So now, oh, okay. so you can, you now you've got load shedding. Your ultra will pull in because it, it's it's got power, so it doesn't have about load shedding. So the ultra will pull in the relay, yes, but this relay won't energize because it's not getting a neutral or light because there is nothing. There is no light coming in because there's there's no mains, there's no two twenty volts. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so that's how you can counter it. Yeah. If you want to make sure that <coughs> yes, it is a true reflection of your lights. It's it's really if the lights are off because it's load shedding. Yeah, so the timer will tell you, hey, listen, yeah, it's two o'clock in the afternoon, I need to switch on. But it, this will say, hang on, well, I don't receive any light because there is no power because there's load shedding. So this relay won't energize. So nothing will tell the ultra on IO1 that the lights are on. So that, this is a true reflection of showing you that the lights won't be switching on or the light isn't on, although the timing is set to be able to switch on. So your 220 uh, coil is a 220 volt maximum 3 amp. So this could be a 10 amp. So normally 220 volt relays are 10 amps and above. So this could be a 10 amp. This could be 10 amp relay. The, the, the circuitry could be 10 amps. Because, let's say you're running 3 watt, 220 volt LED lights, okay, 3 watts, you can connect them straight into the to this relay, without this, this additional relay, because it's 3 watt, 3 watt divided by 220, it's, it's, there's an amp, yeah, there's an amp. okay, so if, it's, if it, this is for proper floodlights, if you've got LED 3 amp, <coughs> you can this all little 3 amp glow, 220 volt, but 3 amp, or 3 watt, you can do the same picture. The light of that light goes to normally open. The light, the common goes to your duty box light. The neutral the light goes straight to neutral. Then you, you can bypass this whole relay. Because the light that you're switching on or that you're hooking up to this ultra is less than 3 amps. So that your light will go from your duty board to common? Yes. And then your other light for the light come out to normally open? Correct. And when the relay closes, it goes to normally yes. open. To yes, yes, yes. I would still person, I would still prefer you doing this route. Because 220, you know, it can handle 220 volt, but maybe it's just safer to do, uh, to do another a, relay. Yes. Right. But if you if you have not the money or you know if you don't want to, you can have to push it straight. It's safer to do it to another relay. Exactly. Because now you're running 220 volt, so you touch something and you you get a shock of your life. Oh. So it will be safer to do additional relay, yeah. but this could be 100 bucks as relay or 80 bucks. Okay. And please read the instructions carefully. Okay. <coughs> so this is quite important. You need to understand what this all means. So in the programming, in the manual, it tells you filter time. So what does filter time mean? Filter time means determines how long an input, input must be presented before it will be recognized. So if I give an input into this I or one. I can put a filter time of five seconds. So it will see the input and it's going to say, okay, my filter time, you have programmed me to be a filter time of five seconds or ten seconds or whatever. So I'm not going to do anything for that filter time. After the ten seconds, if it's now still there after ten seconds, then only I'm going to do something. I'm going to then only send you a signal out. Or then I'm going to switch on a uh, something else, a circuit or something. So the filter time means how long you want this input to wait before it will actually do something about the input it's getting. In case of a mistake. Exactly. So if you hook this to a long, long panel, a lot of time you've got enough actually you've got whoop to arm and whoop whoop to this arm. So if you want, if your alarm is giving you a burglary signal, telling you that there's someone just burglaring your house alarm. So a burglar you want, you want a signal, the moment the alarm goes off, um, it must send you a signal. But also when you're on it, it goes whoop and whoop whoop. Mm -hmm. So that means if you're hooking up IO1 to be a burglar signal, okay, but you're also using an oscillation, and this IO1 is hooked up to your siren of your alarm output. Okay. Every time you whoop your arm, you're going to get a burglar signal on your, on your ultra. Because whoop and whoop whoop will give you a signal on the input. Mm -hmm. 
And I can program IO1 to say, okay, you are a building input. So wait for five seconds. If there's continuous siren, if there's, a, if there's a continuous noise on the siren for more than five seconds, then only send me the signal telling me there's a whoop. Of course, the whoop and the whoop whoop is less than five seconds. So it's close to Yeah. So you can put a filter time to say, okay, just wait five seconds. If, they, if that signal is still in, if that negative is still going into I1 after five seconds or 10 seconds, whatever you program it, then only send me the signal that there is a burping example. That's the opening and closing signals. That exactly, that whoop and whoop whoop with arm and this arm. Yeah. So you can then say, filter, just wait five seconds. That whoop is second. That whoop whoop is two seconds. So the filter is the time, time, time period. Yeah, the time period for it to, before it will send you a signal, before it will then actually act on that signal. Okay. Blanking time determines how long the unit will wait between events before it will recognize the next event. So blanking time is also, let's say you've got an uh, outdoor passive uh, alarm panel, passive, you know, this passive in the red. You can look it up to IO2 example. And you can say, not to give me false alarms, so if it triggers once, blanking time for another minute before it will... So if someone walks around in here, it will give you one trigger, and then for a minute, or depends on how long you make your blanking time, it will ignore all those other signals, because there's a signal. And there's another one if I trip it again. So you can now say, ignore the second one, or ignore any more signals after the first one for a minute, to give you, to, to give you not so many false alarms. Because if someone walks here the whole time, you're going to get crazy about it. It's giving you burglary, burglary, burglary. Mm -hmm. This one's hooked up straight to the de -altra. You can say, okay, give me a two minute delay or three minute delay. So give it a first figure. Yes, I got it. And then blank time. Ignore any more signals for whatever you make your blank time before you send me another signal again for the same burglary, basically. Okay. Can you ignore the signal for a second period of time? Exactly. Another one. Yes. So we would do this on float switches. So if you've got a Jolo tank and you've got a float switch and it's almost full, let's say you've got a float that's on the full the, 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 the full and, and low. So some with the water pushing into the Jolo tank, the water there's waves. So almost to the, the full and not full, that float switch will go up and down, up and down, up and down. So that could the whole time water high, water low, water high, water low. For that five minutes that water takes to push that ball valve the whole time up. So you can say, right, on my filter time on my ball valve for my float level, give me a five minute band blanking time. So that up and down, up and down, till it gets to a full position, that won't give me any signals for five minutes or for 10 minutes. So you'll have a low water and then you will have a high water. You won't have 50 signals in between that high, low, high, low, up until that ball valve can give you the constant. Uh, stay, stay with us. Stay with us. Yeah. So that's Close your blanking time. Close the valve. Close the valve, yeah. So that's your blanking time. Hang time, the time of which the call remains connected after you've pressed the DTM button. So if I'm, if I'm phoning Matthew and I press the button on the gate station and I press the button and phones to Matthew and he answers and he says, I say, hello, it's Justin, I'm here. Then Matthew will press then from his keypad of his phone, he will press one to open the gate. So thereafter, after you press that one, he <coughs> is when you press that button, okay? How long will that call still be connected? Will it then switch off immediately when you press the one? Or can Matthew tell me, Justin, is the gate opening? Yes, it is, okay. So you can say, how long must the call still stay connected after we have to press the button on this keypad? Uh, how long must it stay? So normally it's five seconds. You can have it going on for another 20 minutes so you can, or 20, 20 seconds, so you can say, is it opening, just be careful, there's no beams, go, go, go. you've got 10 seconds to get through the, through, the, through the gate. So that's how long the call will still remain after you've pressed your button to open the gate from your phone. That's hang time. Any number mode allows any number to activate the outputs, irrespective if they are learned into the memory. And this is called free fast mode in GWEB. And you can only do this through GWEB programming. <coughs> so let's say I'm having a party at my house. And I, my laugh was in the back of my house. And I'm not, I haven't got an intercom. I have got a G-Ultra. And I can't hear you. If you stand outside my gate, my laugh was back at my house. So I can't see or hear you. Because the music's too loud and what, what, what. So now I can say, okay, right. 
the morning, so you come into my house three o'clock or three o'clock or right. So that morning, I send you, I program in GWeb, I program free, free pass mode. And I send you an SMS and tell you when you're at my gate, phone this number. I've sent you the number of this, don't worry about it, I've sent you a number. When you're at my gate, I'm not going to hear you, don't honk, I've got no need to come. When you're at my gate, phone this number, it will open the gate for you. You can drive in. Okay? Doesn't matter, I don't have to learn you into the system. Okay, I don't have to load, go to access profiles, access numbers, I don't have to load into it. I'm giving you a free pass to enter. The next morning, after my, my hangover is done and I've got no more headache, then I can delete that free pass mode. Okay. So it's just something that all school, the school's got an event, and they don't want the, 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 the parents to stand or park outside the gate. They can now enter free pass mode, or they can enable free pass mode, and can just tell all the parents, when you're at the gate, just give this number a call, it will open the gate for you, and you can park inside. Is it the same number for everybody? Same number for everybody. Because it's a number, it's actually, the, it's, it's a G-Ultra number. It's a number that the, the G-Ultra is. They just have to phone this one's number. And then it will open the gate when they phone it. So I'll be here now. When the event is now finished, then the principal, whoever's got the, the access to this unit, just disables the free pass mode. So if that parent's going to think he's going to phone again the gate the next day or whenever, it's not going to work because you have now switched off that free pass mode. The same number the next event exactly so because it's the same number so you can just tell them so each and every event you just enable that free pass mode and just tell the parents when you have the gate find that number then obviously that monday if it was a saturday event or that sunday or the monday you just disable the free pass mode so the next event it will always be the same number unless you change the sim card no. if you don't change the sim card change, then you don't change the sim card number the, the number the card that's in there that's number yeah but let's say you put your own sim card in oh. and